What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the Denon AVRX 6700H. Now before we get this unboxed, if you're into home theater or new movies, be sure to tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Alright, let's get this thing unboxed. Inside we get the quick start guide, Wi-Fi and FM antennas, plus some documentation, the cardboard Odyssey mic stand, Odyssey microphone, remote control, batteries for the remote, and here's the power cord. The 6700 has got a bit of weight to it coming in at 32 pounds. It's got the traditional Denon looks. The source selection dial is on the left as well as the power button and the volume knob is on the right with the display in the center. The rest of the controls are behind the drop down door. Here you have the zone selection buttons, HDMI and USB inputs, directional pad, quick select buttons and the headphone jack. Around the back you'll see there are 13 speaker outputs with a rating of 140 watts with two channels driven. Keep in mind, this can only power 11 channels. If you want to power the additional two channels, you will need an extra two channel amplifier. There's pre-outs for all 13 channels with two independent subwoofer outputs. There's seven HDMI ins with only HDMI 7 supporting HDMI 2.1 features with resolutions up to 8K. And there's EARC support as well. For setup, I'll be playing demos using the Zipedi AudioCom 4K media player, and the 6700 will be hooked up in my theater, powering 11 BMW CT 7.4 speakers. Now, if it's your first time with a Denon receiver, there's going to be a little quick setup guide to help you get your speaker set up and get connected to your network. It's all pretty simple. If you've already owned a Denon or Marantz receiver, then these settings haven't changed at all in years, so I'm not going to go over each one. We will, however, take a look at the biggest change, which is the 4K 8K signal format. If you have it set to just enhanced, that'll support 4K 60 10-bit HDR. If you've got an 8K display or something that outputs 4K 120 or 8K 60, then you'd want this to be on 8K enhanced. If you have neither, then just keep it on standard. Next, let's have a quick look at the speaker assignments. This is where you can configure how your speaker arrangement is. There's a ton of different options here, but we're only going to check out the preamp mode. This feature is going to be new this year, so if you're using external amps, preamp mode will disconnect from the internal amplifiers, which will keep the signal path clear of any kind of interference. So you can run this as if it was strictly a preamp processor. That's pretty cool if you need more power in the future. And the rest of the settings, like I said before, is all the same stuff from the past few years. Just a disclaimer, I did run Odyssey and I do have the app handy. I've never been a fan of either, especially this janky app, so I ended up not using either. Instead, I EQ'd my subs using the PEQ built into the SVSs, and I level matched and did distances manually. Of course, if Odyssey works for you, then by all means, use it. Now, just to test how much power this has on hand, I ran all the speakers as large and didn't use my subwoofers. I threw in a couple bass heavy movies, starting with Midway on 4K Blu-ray. This movie's got a ton of bass and some heavy explosions. can't complain, it's got some pretty decent power, especially playing back that rhythmic tone when the bass starts pulsating. The explosions also have some really good kick. Another one of my favorites is Interstellar. You really do need a subwoofer for this movie, but it's great to see what kind of chops your speakers have. Don't work here. 
Okay, as reference point, I normally use about 10 grand worth of amplifiers. It's probably not a fair comparison, but it's always good to know what something different sounds like. The receiver alone doesn't have the same impact or dramatic weight that a dedicated amp can provide, and it also sounds more compressed up top, whereas my amplifiers feel like they have way more headroom than I need. If I'm just listening at more normal levels, then the 6700 is very capable. Bass response is still lighter sounding at normal levels compared to my amps at the same level, but I'm sure if you're picking up this receiver, you're likely going to be using a subwoofer, so it's going to be less taxing on the internal amps. Next I wanted to see how it handled some quieter movies that rely on ambiance, so I threw in The Invisible Man and A Quiet Place. I've always thought the Denons were on the brighter side of neutral for sonic qualities, which I find works well for these types of movies. It does give these movies some good air, and spatial characteristics that opens up the soundstage. I also had the subwoofers turned on as well, which does open things up a bit. If you do happen to run Odyssey, you might find that you need to bump your subs up about 6 to 10 dB to get some of that bass back. At least in my room, that's what I always have to do. Anyways, there was very good detail in the surround channels, and the height speaker activity was engaging as well. Now the closest thing that I've had in recently in price to compare against the 6700 would be the NAD T778. I think that one handled overhead effects more convincingly, and brought them more front and center, meaning they were more distinguishable audibly. And its room correction I find works better as well. The 778 is about 500 bucks more, so I know it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison, but it's the closest one I've got. Now if you did happen to pick this up because you wanted to be a little future proof since it has HDMI 2.1 support, and you're starting to feel a little underwhelmed with its power output, this does have a preamp out mode which will completely disconnect itself from the internal amps, so you can upgrade to something more powerful. I happen to have some affordable amps from Emotiva on hand which I hooked up, and right off the bat, I did hear a larger soundstage. I'm not going to review the Emotiva amps, but I did find using outboard amplifiers definitely brought out some more detail, which means using this as a pre-pro isn't a bad idea. At the time of this video, the Denon AVRX 6700H is $2499. One of the main selling points of it is its 8K support. Keep in mind, this only has HDMI 2.1 features, and is only 40 gigabits per second, and not 48, so it's not a true HDMI 2.1 input. As of right now though, there's nothing AK that's readily available to watch, which is why I couldn't test it, and I don't have an AK display. It will however be ready for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, and for all you AK PC gamers. There's other features it has like AirPlay, Google Assistant support, and music streaming services, which is all great but I wanted to keep this about the home theater performance. The 6700 really is a good sounding receiver, and I think it performs as you'd expect for its asking price. If you can get it on sale, then even better. I think if you have the previous year's version, and even the year before that, I'm sure you'll find the quality to be very similar, not only in its sound quality, but its reliability. If there's one thing that's awesome about these Denons, is that they just work. It's pretty rare that you'll find an HDMI bug or something freezing for no reason, which is something you can't say about other brands. Like I said, it's a quality product, and it's reliable. So those are my thoughts on the Denon 6700. Have you guys heard it, and how important is HDMI 2.1 to you? Leave a comment and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful, and be sure to tap the subscribe button if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.